But, but let's talk about the other transition that you mentioned in your opening comments and, and, and the ascension of Xi Jinping to the leadership. Uh, you've met the man. Um, you know, I'll, I'll ask, a, I guess, the obvious question that none of us who haven't met him can know. What is he really like to the extent you can tell? He's very much more uh, perhaps uh, casual, uh, uh, more at ease in public and with people. Um, uh, he's already come out with several uh, pronouncements uh, saying, uh, you know, reduce the, the red tape, or excuse me, the, the pomp and circumstance around meetings, uh, not, not so many floral arrangements, red carpet treatment for delegations or for visitors, uh, keep your meetings short, uh, don't use, uh, don't read your prepared remarks, have a real conversation. And Orville, you've studied every Chinese leader, worked with every Chinese leader since Mao. How is, how is he different? Well, you know, I think what's so interesting about the situation now is that whereas once uh, there was a tremendous premium on a, a, a leader being a big leader that had very clear policies and acted very boldly and had a, a public persona, now there is a, a different kind of leadership going on. And the reason why we don't know more about Xi Jinping is because it doesn't serve well in the present scheme of things to stick your tail up too tall and to demonstrate too much of a sort of individual perspective. How do you assess his early moves? Well, I think when he went to Shenzhen uh, just a, a week and a half ago, um, it was, of course, he was following in the footsteps of Deng Xiaoping, who'd done the same thing in 1992, to signal that economic reform after 1989 was going to proceed. But then he also went to meet with some military commanders. And here he was a little more muscular and his more nationalist sentiments came out and he said, we have to have a strong military and you know, we, we have to guard our sovereignty. And this, of course, rattled a few cages in Southeast Asia and Japan because there are these uh, obvious points of contention in the islands. But um, I still don't quite think we know who this man is, but he's slowly starting to reveal little pieces. It's sort of a picture that's pixelating itself slowly. But there'll still be a lot of pieces missing. How much does that matter to the United States? Well, it very much matters because, obviously, uh, on issues like economic reform, opening up their economy, uh, moving away from an export-driven economy to a more consumption, domestic-based economy, uh, uh, is important for us. It's important for the world economy. It's also important for China. But we really, as Orville indicated, we don't really have a great sense of, of the policies of Xi Jinping uh, because China is ruled by a committee of seven and he may be the future president, he may be the head of the new, he may be the new head of the Communist Party and head of the military right now. But he's got to develop a consensus uh, among the other members of the group of seven. And he may be the leader of the group of seven, but he's got to get their support. He's got to develop that coalition uh, and it may take him a while to consolidate uh, his, his alliances and, and uh, figure out where he can move and at what pace that would meet the comfort level of the other members of the Group of Seven, the Standing Committee um, of the Politburo. So we really won't know for a, a while exactly how fast, how far he's going to move, and in what areas uh, he'll, he'll emphasize.